somewhere behind me Hello. Is, is the guy they call V-Man who had too much shit in his pockets. So do I. Hi, hey, everyone. How's it going? Ah, that was kind of weak. Give it up. <laughs> oh, there we go. Much better. Much better. So That sun is excellent. I have to start the conversation this way. I might... There's no way I'm the first person that's told you this, but you are, as of today, you have the number one album in the United Kingdom. Yeah, that's, 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 uh, I woke up to the text and I was like, that's awesome. It's insane, right? Yeah, it's great. <laughs> yeah. I believe it's the third one now. So. Yeah, and uh, right now the new Slipknot record is number one in Australia, Germany, uh, and yeah, it's number one in the UK. I mean, yeah. that's just phenomenal, especially for this kind of music, for this extreme of music, and for this many records into an illustrious career. I mean, it's just... Yeah, congrats. It's, first of all, uh, thank you very much. Yeah, no, I'm uh, especially be, be, being from the UK. That's kind of amazing to be able to exactly, yeah, to to say I did that again. So, yeah, you know. I just watched uh, a documentary about Sinead O'Connor, and there was a clip from like you know her peak, and she was on a uh, an English talk show, and they were asking her like, so it sounds like your record might open at number one. How do you feel about that? And she's like, oh well, you know, that's not the reason why we do it, and this and that. And she gives very Art artistic answer that was very true and then the guy asked her so when do you find out whether or not it's number one and she's like 10 to 4 on Sunday <laughs> <laughs> so it's like you know you care but you don't yeah, but yeah. you do and I, so I, when I it care. happens it's fucking awesome yeah. I, it was a, a, an array of text messages so after the, the tenth one I was like okay cool yeah, thanks. Yeah, I love it well this, this is my first time meeting you and every, all of our the mutual people that we know Spencer from Ice Nine Kills being one uh, they're all calling you the grill master yeah, um, so prior to uh, the COVID situation, when we'd go on tour, we'd, uh, I think, like, when there was a good travel day, when uh, all the crew could stay behind and all the band would stay behind, uh, I would, we'd get a big giant grill out and I'd spend all day making burgers, vegan burgers, and then uh, get on stage and I stink of garlic and onions and stuff, play the show, get changed quickly, and then I'd just sit there and cook for about two, two to three hours for all the crew, all the bands and stuff, play some music. And then, uh, yeah, COVID happened, and then we had to stop doing that. And then uh, only on this tour was like the first time when we didn't have to deal with all the things up your nose. So it was uh, now we can actually like mingle with other bands. And so I thought, hey, we got a good couple of days off. Let's have a grill. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, well, everyone's been raving about it, which is so that's good. Uh, where did that come from, as far as like your background growing up, or you know that that impulse? Because not everybody has that impulse to feed all their friends. And I think it's just I come from a crew background, so it's you know just we've got a lot of crew members, like fifty odd, and you know they work really hard to to put this show on. You know, there's a lot of moving parts. It's it's not something that happens in five minutes. You know. People are working right now, you know, making sure everything's ready. So I feel, you know, it's my contribution back to to everybody to sit, have a burger or whatever and a couple of drinks and just to relax at the end of the night as opposed to, you know, collapsing on the bus and going to sleep. So, you know, it's just my little, uh, I don't know, it's social thing, you know, get to hang Reminds out. Reminds me of like the Warped Tour barbecues. Yeah, Warped something like that, you know, it's just, it's something for people to mingle and, you know, instead of it being... Right, you're out there, you've done your work, that's it, you're done, and no one gets to hang, so, I don't know. Big Pantera fan, watching all the old Pantera videos and stuff like that. I don't know, maybe it's just something for me that, that yeah. it's just like, you know, who wants to sit in a, in a bus on your own when you could go hang out with everyone else and mingle and have a couple of drinks? I love that idea of paying it forward. In fact, somebody, uh, literally just a couple of minutes ago, sent me uh, this little excerpt of an interview with Dave Grohl, and they were asking him about how accommodating he is to bands that they play with and that sort of communal, friendly atmosphere backstage. And he said he learned that from Dimebag Daryl. Yeah, I mean, he was the party man. So it's, uh, I mean, don't you know? Don't get me wrong; it's not like a crazy. People, yeah, yeah, yeah. People not aren't so smashing stuff up, and you know, it's. But uh, I, but the camaraderie of it, and yeah, making sure exactly. it's not like you know, we're the headlining band, you're the main support band. We're, yeah. you know, it's like everyone's just hanging out. Yeah. It's a big uh, Slipknot Knot Fest event. Uh, and I appreciated you said vegan burgers as someone who hasn't eaten meat since I was a little kid. Well, you know, we've got a lot. There's a lot of vegan members, and uh, uh, I mean, Clown is now vegan, and uh, so trying to make sure everybody gets their fair share of uh, 
the goods. A veg, a as, veg. You say, yeah. as you say in your native land. Yeah. Uh, so when you're putting together a set list, uh, and, and obviously, I mean, there are more people in Slipknot than most bands. Yes. <laughs> and uh, few, maybe a hierarchy of, of who's going to be choosing the set list, who knows. But uh, there are songs that you have to play. Uh, you know, someone might have been listening to Slipknot for 20 plus years, but this is the first time they're seeing the band and how disappointed are they if you don't play this or that. But at the same time, there's a new record and you want to integrate those songs and you're excited about playing them. How do you make those decisions for a show like this one? Of uh, what makes the cut and what you get to play? I think, you know, there's, there's the standard songs that, uh, you know, the timeless classics that need to be played, you know. Um, if we just went on and just played all B-sides or played yeah. the, all the rarities, you know, could make an interesting show, but, you know, sometimes people want to come and listen to the classics, you know. And uh, I think now with a new album coming out, uh, well, it is out now, sorry. I'm, I'm still stuck in a... Right, a week ago. <laughs> yeah, a week ago. Yeah, that happened, didn't it? Um, I think, you know, now there's new songs and stuff like that. Um, once next year comes along, we'll start, you know, adding all the others, you know. I think we're just still on that kind of previous, uh, you know, since the COVID thing, you know, we're still in that kind of realm. So once this year's done, then it's going to be time for more deep cuts and more new songs. So. Yeah, and kind of uh, giving the record a chance to marinate and percolate. Uh, does everybody here have the new Slipknot record? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So uh, are you into hearing new songs when the time comes? Yeah, see, that's what you want to hear. That's what you want to hear is uh, people still when, when people are still excited about the new stuff. Yeah, and, and, and also with the, the new album, it's there's a lot more involved in it, and so it won't be the the case of you know just guitars. There's going to be some extra elements that would need to be added right to, to the stage show for us to be able to play those songs. So um, you know, which that's going to be a whole whole thing in itself so yeah i had the opportunity to speak with sid uh, a couple days ago for the not fest instagram live and we were talking about working with joe barisi and he was saying how it was really a almost a combination of that old school analog back to the ross robinson days style with the new technologies and, and all the different things what, what was your experience like in terms of uh, that producer bass player relationship yeah i mean joe was I've been wanting to work with Joe for a very long time. Just big fan of his work. I mean, his work with Tool. I mean, countless bands. Queens of the Stone Age. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah. You could, the list is just ridiculous. Melvins. I mean, I, you know, it's just one of those people in your life where you you, ex, you you go into it going, oh wow, like this is you know this is somebody that as a kid growing up he's been putting these these albums out. So to get to work with him, like he, he was just so straight to the point and just like how do you want to 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 approach your bass because me and him we've never worked before so right uh and he was just 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 fuck it let's just do this let's do that let's do this let's do that and if something didn't work there was no like messing around to try and make it work it was if it wasn't working just get rid of it and you know we had a sound like real quick and That's awesome. and uh He's just a, just an expert, you know, and his gear that he's got and just it's like a time machine of really cool stuff. And to get to use them that other bands have used on other previous records, is, I think is amazing. Um, when we did uh, Adderall, um, we were looking around and I didn't want to use my standard bass that I use live. Um, and then um, kindly Justin from Tool lent us uh, this really old P bass. That's the the bass that I wrote with uh, wow. for Adderall. So you know, you, you know those type of little things that just yeah. make the album special. You know, so. magic in the grooves coming yeah. off of it. You know, you know, yeah, yeah. not to get hippy dippy on you, but something's <laughs> in there. Yeah, and uh, it, 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 did you find yourself even probably thinking, as you're talking about tone and and gear and stuff with Joe, you're probably thinking, well, some of the references you'd want are records he's made. No, exactly. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. Like, I'd like something to sound like this. Okay, cool. And then we just sit there and try and work on it. You know, yeah. obviously it needs to be unique to what I'm doing, but sure. you need that. You need a reference point, and some of the re reference points are his, his works. So, yeah. yeah. I remember talking to CC, the drummer from Black Veil Brides, once when they, they had made a record with Bob Rock, and he said the first conversation with Bob, where he's like, "What kind of drum tones are you into? What are some records?" The you Black love? Album. Yeah, and he yeah. was like, "The so, Black Album." Like, yeah. yeah. Just, Literally, just do whatever you did there. <laughs> well, our, pr our previous uh, "We Are Not Your Kind," uh, the kit that we used was actually used on 
uh, the Black Album. Incredible. Yeah. So. Incredible. Just li- literally legendary sounds. Yep. Uh, so uh, there is, uh, you know, one of the questions that I kept getting uh, chatting with Sid on IG Live and all the questions are scrolling by. Uh, there's a lot of people want to know when Slipknot's coming to the UK. Well, yeah, I, I like that because it's hometown kind of exactly. Thing. Whenever we get to do like Download Festival or we play like the O2 or something like this, just uh, I always have a stupid amount of guests. I was going to say that's when you start hearing from people <laughs> that you haven't heard from. Well, no, no, I have a strict rule now. If, if I don't hear from you for like a couple of years and you start <laughs> hounding me the day before for guest list, then you're like, it's an instant no. It's an instant no. It's an ignore. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, cool. New phone. Who dis? <laughs> yeah. So. No, but it's it's you you know growing up going to shows there, seeing so many bands in some of the venues that I get to play in, you know, it's just such an honor. And so for me, I like to share that with my friends and family, you know. So so it's just that little bit special for me. So. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, last thing I wanted to ask you about is one of the things that I love about Slipknot, uh, much like Tool and how Maynard has a perfect circle and Pussifer, I feel like we've really entered this era where, uh, you know, it, there's the main band, there's the main vehicle, you know, there's the thing you show up for and it always means the most. But I feel like there's a lot more openness to people doing other projects and doing other bands and Slipknot's really carried that torch. And uh, Sid and I were talking about a bunch of uh, you know, rappers he's producing and things like that. Uh, what else is going on in the world of V-Man? Do you have other outside interests, projects, ideas? Um, I'm always, I think, since this record and getting very hands-on with recording and stuff like that, I'm definitely on the road. I'm always noodling around or I'm always working on stuff. Um, and that's just to keep keep everything fresh because whenever I, in the past I've taken time off from practicing or something like that you just get rusty and you just kind of you know you feel a bit disappointed in yourself so I, I'm striving now to stop that from happening and I'm just you know having a reg- regimented routine of being like right I'm going to do an hour of messing around on this or I'm going to try to do some recording here programming some drums or some stuff you know little things like that and that's it just keeps things exciting um we have like a little recording system that we bring around and a lot of the ideas on the new album come from that. Oh, wow. Yeah, so, you know, someone will just come in one day and be like, or Mike will play some little piano line or something like that. And then, you know, two years later, that got taken out the hard drive and got used on the record, you know? Yeah. So it's, it, it's, it's good to keep that going, you know? Um, apart from that, I did guitar building. So when I go home, I build guitars. That's my nice. little... That's my little <laughs> we got people in your band that build masks. We have a guy who builds guitars. <laughs> yeah. So I try not to lose my fingers. But uh. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? Losing your fingertips, uh, you know, Tony Iommi. It's how he, he did all invented right. Metal. He so. did all right. Yeah. So. <laughs> awesome. Well, V Man, thanks so much for coming, yeah, hanging you. out with the Knotfest. Thanks, guys. VIP yeah. crowd, guys. Knotfest.com. Uh, there's a bunch of content with this gentleman talking about all kinds of shit. Uh, you can always come there, see all the stuff we have about Slipknot. All the bands in our community are culture, movies, games, all that shit. It's all under the nice big tent that Slipknot provides for us. So thanks so much, dude. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Appreciate Hope you enjoyed the you. show. Cheers. <laughs>